What's up, guys? Hey, guys, JP here. For those of you that are new, Jermaine here. And today, we're going to be talking about outdoor lighting setups. Yeah, which lighting do you prefer? Natural light or flash photography? Natural. Naturally, flash is better. No, natural is better. No, flash is better. Yeah. Flash, you, what, you're gonna carry that thing versus this thing? <laughs> I could shoot all night long with this thing. Yeah, you this? can only shoot for two hours. You're gonna yeah, run what about battery. this? Oh. oh, what's up, guys? Um, <laughs> what's up? We're back. Ever since I can remember, there's always been a debate whether natural light or flash is flash. <clears throat> While the majority of our shoots involve flashes and happen in the studio, we do love our natural outdoor shoots. Outdoor portraits just give a different vibe. They feel more organic and spontaneous. Yeah, now shooting outdoor portraits isn't just as easy as placing your subject in front of a nice background and snapping a photo. You have to be aware of how the lighting affects your scene. And today, we're going to go over a few lighting setups we like to use for our outdoor shoots. First setup is all natural lighting. This is the most commonly used and just like it sounds, it's using the sun as your only light source. Natural light photography makes some of the most stunning portraits. The images look very true to life. Well, because they are. It's what we see every mm. day. Knowing how to use the sun and position your subject in relation to the sun is what will help you take great shots. One of our favorite things to do is use the sun as your backlight. This creates a nice highlight and glow, especially close to sunrise or sunset, known as golden hour, when the sun is real low. But be careful not to catch too much flare as you'll lose a lot of contrast and detail on your images. One thing you shouldn't do is have the sun directly in front of your model as this will cause them to be uncomfortable and squint and create unflattering shadows. Another way to create nice even lighting outdoors is to look for shade. Whether it's under trees or a roof, looking for shade can help you, especially when the sun is harsh. One of the nice things about shooting with all natural light is that it gives you more freedom. Freedom to move around and not have to carry extra gear like lights and light stands. It's also more straightforward because you're not having to look at the camera after a shot to see what the light does to your image, like you would with a flash. However, it does have some drawbacks. Natural light could require more editing work because oftentimes the subject just isn't bright enough relative to the background. Also, some shots may just not be possible, such as shooting a model with the sunset in the background without having them turn into silhouettes or blowing out the background entirely. Whether you plan to use strobes or not, understanding how to use natural light is one of the most crucial things when it comes to shooting outdoor portraits. Now, let's move on to our next type of lighting, artificial lighting. Artificial light is what we use in the studio and it's the most controllable, shapeable, and movable. Learning how to use artificial lighting outdoors will take your portraits to the next level. Mm. Now, let's be honest, guys. Using flashes can be intimidating. It was at least for me in the beginning. But the benefits are worth the headaches of learning light using artificial lighting. Whether it's with speed lights, strobe, constant lighting, artificial light portraiture has an edge on natural light. Images can be moody, and you might find that it suits your style. For example, imagine shooting a beautiful golden hour session. And if you're shooting with all natural light, as Jerms mentioned earlier, you'd be either photographing a silhouette or would be overexposing the skies to be able to expose your subject accurately. But now look at the power of using artificial light. In this example, you can see we have exposed for the background and used artificial light and high-speed sync to be able to light our subject correctly. You can't deny that the image with a flash looks more complete and tells a better story of the afternoon and the beach setting. Another aspect that I love about shooting with artificial light is that you can practically shoot any time as you're not restricted by daylight hours. We wandered around Balboa Park for hours and germs hogged all the beautiful light, but I didn't care because I knew that I had my strobes and the park has a lot of well-lit areas. The lights came on and so did my flash. Take a look at this beautiful patio and the street lights around it. I love the idea of lights in the background, lighting the patio, 
And with the artificial light, I lit the model to complete the image. Lighting with artificial light, whether it's a flash or constant light, takes some practice. So don't be discouraged and practice with the different modifiers as they'll all give you different results. Are you done? I'm done, they're sold. All right, guys, so what's actually better? Is it natural or artificial? Uh, neither. It's just a matter of personal preference. We prefer to shoot all light, which is a combination of both because it gives the image a more punchy look and creates clear subject to background separation. Yeah, agree. And even if you do prefer one look over the other, you should learn how to use both natural and artificial light because this will give you the most flexibility to create the image you want. You're right. It's it's team. It's a team effort. Hope that was helpful. As always, guys, like this video if you liked it. Dislike if you didn't. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. And we'll see you on the next one. Peace.